Well, greetings and welcome to the inevitable part three video in the Steampunk series in which we create the uh, speaker cabinet for our amp head. And looking at these wretched materials, I know you're thinking, ah, I don't know about this one. But believe it or not, I have a plan that will turn these unsightly rusty pieces of steel and this old wretched Ampro speaker cabinet into something that I think will knock your socks off. If you have any faith in me, uh, stay tuned, okay? Uh, we're about to get started. First off, let's identify the parts we'll be using. Back here is an old bent up bumper from my Jeep. These are two uh, rear uh, suspension control arms from a high jumper uh, dune buggy. This is just a piece of pipe that was dug up out of the garden. I think they used it as a trellis. This is a flat piece of steel plate that I used uh, when boxing the frame on that Model A pickup uh, that I uh, showed you uh, several videos ago. Okay, and then of course the, set, the speaker grill that was painted gold um, in the Art Deco uh, amp series uh, now uh, will be painted a different color to suit our uh, steampunk head. Step one is going to be uh, to cut out a 14 and 5 8 by 8 and a half base plate out of 8 inch steel uh, and it has to have rounded corners. So this is going to take a little while. Uh, I'll see you then in a few minutes. And there, thanks to the magic of videography, we have our 1 8 inch base plate all cut out, edges filed and smoothed. Next, it's time to cut out the legs. When cutting heavy pipe like this uh, that has to have perfectly square ends, a uh, chop saw is always the best. Okay, It aligns the pipe and cuts a perfect vertical cut. And now we have two identical length, perfectly square cut, 18 inch pipe legs. Uh, and the ends have been ground down to the bare metal to facilitate welding. This is good stout pipe. Okay, probably, uh, I don't know, 3 16 or quarter inch. It's heavy, but we want the weight down low. Uh, so this is actually an ideal material. Then just for fun, I think we need some bolt-on kneecaps. So I made a curved piece of steel like so to go around and then a great big washer and some old automotive knobs. I love it. Defrost and temperature control. Okay, that should add a little detail to the legs. Now my plan to make feet out of this old Jeep bumper is to cut a triangle out of the end of the bumper and then bend this flat part here that's left down at an angle so that the feet appear solid from above with tapering uh, ends. They'll be trapezoidal in other words. Now that that triangle is cut out and the flap has been scribed here where we want it to bend, then uh, we hammer it down uh, to where it coincides with this angle and creates a nice closed trapezoid and we have one foot made. Of course all these seams will have to be welded and ground but uh, I think you get the idea. Then following exactly the same steps we make the right foot. Okay now it's uh, time to start doing some welding and grinding and uh, fixing up these parts uh, to make them presentable. Well we've had to have a mid-course correction here Instead of the larger diameter uh, pipe, which is cast iron, I decided instead to go with a smaller diameter steel tubing for several reasons. Number one, the smaller diameter actually looks better. And number two, uh, cast iron is real hard to weld. So uh, I'll just throw this back into the scrap heap and we're going to go with some nice uh, steel tubes for our legs. Here's a close-up of the parts I'm using to make the kneecaps for the legs. Uh, great big heavy washer that is bent to match the curvature of this one inch wide metal strap. Spacers that go on either side here and then uh, for a nice knobby knee I've got a couple automotive uh, control knobs that uh, will screw on to 
this stud that I've welded here in the middle. It's all held on with a 5 16 inch bolt. Here's one that's together. You can see that it's a knobby little knee. This particular one is for temperature control. Jack has a real racket going here. Every time he hides under the rug, the only way we can find him is to put some shrimpy treats out here at the end that doesn't have a tail sticking out. Let's see if he'll appear. Oh, there he is. Good work, Jack. Extorting shrimpy treats. Well, one of the feet has been welded and uh, ground down and partially primered. I uh, had to leave this area clear because that's where the leg will attach. Uh, I think you can see quite a difference between the two. Uh, remember this was a really beat up Jeep bumper so it's really heavy heavy steel and perfect for our purposes but it's also got some battle scars. Now it's time to make sure that the legs are perfectly vertical and then weld them to the base plate that will hold the speaker cabinet. Okay, Weld all the way around. It has to be really strong. Um, next we're going to flip this over and weld the other end of the legs to the two feet. Okay, now we have our base plate, legs, knees, and feet welded to the legs. I weld it all the way around to make sure that uh, it was maximum strength. We don't want the whole thing tipping over late at night, scaring the cat. Now we can set the Ampro cabinet up on top of the legs and feet. See how it's going to look. One thing that worries me is the rubber feet of the uh, speaker cabinet very close to the edge here of the uh, base plate. So I think I'm either going to put rings to hold the feet or maybe a bumper around the edge. Now the four little corner guards are welded in place so that the speaker cabinet cannot slide off the base plate. And now for my favorite part of this build, uh, we're going to construct the ray gun for our robot. And unlike most ray guns, this one's going to be a revolver. Okay, this is the cylinder. I'm going to solder it all together and uh, then we'll come up with the frame and barrel and, uh, and all for the rest of the gun. Okay, here's the cylinder uh, soldered together. I held it with a hose clamp and also I uh, made sure there was a central piece of pipe that I could use uh, to put an, an axle through so that this would spin. I've got to clean up a little of that solder and then we'll be ready to continue. Now we have a free spinning 75 caliber cylinder for our ray gun. Now it's time to make the frame that goes around the bottom of the revolver cylinder. Uh, Please don't ask me for any plans on this robot or this gun because I have none uh, as is my kind of standard way of doing these things. I just get started and just make them from scratch. Okay, here is the cylinder all made with the forcing cone, the barrel which will have to be cut to a proper length, uh, attached to a vertical frame piece that holds the axle for the cylinder to rotate about and here is the lower frame piece which is going to fit up here then this is going to slide on here and then we will build the rear part of the uh, ray gun. Okay the frame is now complete we have the cylinder here lined up with the barrel got a really snazzy end on the barrel and a rear sight and about all we need now is a handle here that a robot could hold. Well here's the finished ray gun. Uh, you see that I drilled some holes in the barrel to make it look a little more exotic. Uh, we have the cylinder uh, with the thermonuclear rounds, the rear sight, and then uh, for a handle I soldered on a, another piece of this same size copper tubing and slid a a heavy black uh, rubber hose over it and drilled out holes so that you can see the copper underneath. 
Okay, that way the robot will be able to grab this with his little pincher hands. Today's project is going to be to build the arms for our robot speaker cabinet. And I'm going to be using the rear control arms from a high jumper dune buggy I had several years ago. This one broke out in the desert and stranded me for several hours. But I'm going to use that break to be the elbow of the right arm, uh, the one that's going to be holding the ray gun. So step one will be to link these two together uh, as a bent arm and secondly come up with a good way to attach this one and the uh, left arm which is complete uh, to the cabinet in a way that it can be quickly uh, removed if necessary. So using the cutoff saw I've cut an inlet here for the forearm and then a piece of steel strap to go inside at this bend and be riveted here and here to hold the elbow in position. Now that piece of steel strap is bent to the proper angle and riveted to the elbow so that we have a good solid joint. Next, next we'll lock it in up here at the top and we'll have a, a nice arm uh, articulated properly to be holding the ray gun. Okay, the rivets are pulled up tight after this corner is spot welded with just a little bit of uh, a blemish showing on the outside in the chrome, but I think we can live with that. Now we have a properly angled arm come up here to the shoulder and then come forward to brandish our thermonuclear uh, space revolver. Now to do our shoulder for the arm, uh, cut out a piece of wood that fits the inside of the arm and comes up arched uh, in shoulder fashion. Since we want the arm to be spaced away from the body of the speaker cabinet uh, to avoid rattles and buzzes, I'll have to make a shim about a quarter inch thick to give us uh, a little bit of clearance between the arm and the speaker cabinet. Now the three quarter inch wide shoulder plus the quarter inch shim are finished and ready to uh, be installed. You see that uh, spacing now that that shim gives between the arm and the cap. Now that shoulder piece is painted silver to look sort of like aluminum and uh, then securely screwed to the arm and it gives us sufficient clearance between the arm and the cabinet and it looks rather shoulder like. Okay, we've connected the shoulder and arm to the cabinet using a one half inch bolt with a giant wing nut. So if you want to remove the arm, it's just simply a matter of undoing the wing nut and the arm lifts right off. Looks pretty good to me. Now we've got to fabricate the little pincher hand here that will be holding our intergalactic uh, revolver ray gun. Okay, I designed a gun hand for our robot. Uh, the grip will fit down in here and then when we pinch together like this, this uh, plate back here will push forward and lock the gun into place. Uh, now this piece will fit right up here on the end of the arm and we've got a bolt to go through and pinch down and hold the hand and the gun quite securely. Next we've got to polish up those wrist bolts so they uh, fit in with the chrome using the buffing wheel. Here's the finished arm from the shoulder joint, elbow, wrist with gripping hand holding the intergalactic space revolver. This robot means business. Now it's time to make a matching shoulder, uh, install the arm, and create a little gripping hand for the left arm. Now I'm working on the left hand of the robot, and it's sort of a hand like a steam shovel with the jaws here uh, that have notches. Then uh, this will be the wrist piece. It's just a piece of steel that's been radiused to match the jaw. And then all of this will fit down here and bolt through 
uh, to make a wrist on the left arm of the robot. I'm out on the back porch and I'm looking for Jack and I can't find him anywhere. I think I'll straighten out this towel here that's all wrinkled up on the couch. Oh my lord, Jack! You fool me again, buddy. I stayed up all night worrying about the structural integrity of this weapon. How can a 75 caliber intergalactic ray gun just have a barrel that is not supported? I mean, you're asking for trouble. Uh, say you're in a firefight with the Klingons from Uranus. What's going to happen? The barrel's probably going to warp. Uh, so I made this manifold that supports the a barrel and also injects additional energy into the projectile as it's passing down the barrel. Uh, next job was to make up a claw hand uh, for the left arm and as you can see uh, it looks sort of like a steam shovel or a cartoon with teeth but I thought if I were a robot and wanted to grip something that would be the type of claw hand I'd use to do it. And there is the claw hand installed on the left arm. And I guess that's about it for the fabrication that has to be done. Well I took the little headless robot outside so you could see uh, a look all the way around. Well he means business with that gun, doesn't he? Looks like the next step will be to remove the handle on top, disassemble everything and do the final painting and come up with a creative way to make this look really nice and I think you can guess the color scheme on the grill and probably the legs uh, I'm thinking of doing in copper uh, the paint to match the uh, amp head. Okay, so now I'm going to set the camera down and get started, and I will see you soon. And I should add that the beauty of this design is that in about 30 seconds, it all comes apart uh, to be transported quite easily, and then reset up in another 30 seconds. Well, sadly, Mother Nature has kind of thrown us a curve here by bringing a winter storm uh, to bear upon my little work area. So uh, it looks like I'm going to stop the video at this point and post it and we will continue uh, with a part two video uh, showing the remainder of the preparations for the speaker cabinet and a test. Also I have some really I think neat ideas to pep up the speaker cabinet that I think you'll enjoy. So please stay tuned for part two. I uh, appreciate the uh, Patreon patrons and PayPal contributors which uh, have kept us on the air again uh, uh, advertising free which is getting to be a real rarity on YouTube uh, and also uh, I hope that uh, you all will subscribe and join us again in the part two video. Thanks so much for watching uh, we'll see you again once the weather improves. Meanwhile let's take a drone flight uh, made on a much sunnier and more suitable day. Uh, hope you enjoy it. We'll see you again soon.